ABC Friday. It just takes one great idea to change your life. Shark Tank returns for its 15th season. I didn't know I was going to cry right now. <laughs> with new guest sharks, Jason Blum of Blumhouse, Michael Rubin of Fanatics, and Candace Nelson of Sprinkles Cupcakes. I'm going to make you an offer. On a scale of 1 to 10. I've never seen anything like this on Shark Tank. This season is a 15. I totally believe in you. <laughs> Shark Tank premieres Friday on ABC and stream on Hulu. Before we start, please check out our new podcast, Good Sleep. Have you ever noticed how a calm mind can really set the stage for a good night's sleep? That's the idea behind our new podcast, Good Sleep. Greg, our host from Optimal Relationships Daily, is here to help ease you into a peaceful night's rest with some positive affirmations. And these affirmations aren't just comforting, they can help ease anxiety and nurture positive thoughts, setting you up for true good sleep. So press play on good sleep tonight because a good tomorrow starts with a good night's sleep. Just search for good sleep in your podcast app and be sure to pick the one from Optimal Living Daily. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2917, Two Things Stopping You from Your Next First and Why You'll Never Forgive Yourself by Tom Nixon with lifeandwim.com. And I'm Justin Mollick. And we're gonna jump right into today's article as we optimize your life. two things stopping you from your next first and why you'll never forgive yourself by Tom Nixon with lifeandwhim.com. I'll never forget my first kiss, but I have no idea where I was on my 37th. My first car was a yellow Buick Skyhawk. No idea what my sixth one was. My first day of college seems like yesterday. All the other days walking to class blend together into one amorphous blob of nostalgia and feel like forever ago. As someone who has been closely following Life and Whim's dedication to the power of life's first moments, I can speak as a proud member of the converted. The science behind this phenomenon is convincing and familiar. There's just something about that first time that seeps into your psyche and later comes to define how you evaluate your life and contributions to the world around you. I've been inspired by this journey through understanding and harnessing the power of firsts even to the point of forcing myself into uncomfortable situations I would otherwise avoid. But I've learned that it's only through pain that growth happens. My first audition. Living in a home filled with budding and accomplished thespians alike, I've been immersed into musical theater over the last decade or so. Growing up as an athlete, theater was something that never really interested me. But the more I sat in dark theaters watching amateurs have the time of their lives performing in community theater, the more I was drawn to it. It didn't matter that some of the actors were brilliant while others were tragically subpar. They were all doing it and they were leaving whatever apprehensions they may have also had far behind. Good for them. Even better for me. My wife practically forced me to attend my first audition. I was terrified, I had zero experience, I didn't even know what to expect or what to do. I was gonna fall flat on my face and be laughed out of the room. Until I didn't. Tom, you'll be Alvin T. Patterson, a bumbling hick of a goofball that has to do a soft shoe solo. Huh? Funny thing happened on my way to the Coliseum or community theater stage. I loved it. I received accolades, not humiliation. I caught something known as the theater bug, which presented as postpartum depression when the play wrapped up. I actually missed it. I decided then and there, I'm a theater guy now, and I haven't looked back. Two years later, I landed a role as one of the leading characters in a Shakespearean drama. Had I never done the first, I would have never had the opportunity to do the next. My first novel. When a dear friend passed away unexpectedly a couple of years ago, it forced me to take stock. Not only was I mourning his loss, I was also lamenting the fact that no one in the world would ever get a chance to read his brilliant writing. He was gifted, but never published. How did I want my own legacy to play out? I've written everything from children's books to screenplays, but I never had anything published. Modern technology removes all of the barriers and excuses to getting your work published and distributed. So I wrote. My bucket list dream was converted into an actual plan and this time I had to force myself to take the first step. I opened a new document and simply typed without thinking. Everybody knows somebody like Joel Thomas. 
I didn't even have an idea yet, but I had to start explaining that opening line. And I was off. Nine months later, The Long Lost was published. I can't tell you how fulfilling the act of completing and publishing a novel is for someone who's always loved writing. Again, I was both humbled and somewhat shocked to receive accolades, not disparagement. So what had I been waiting for? Two things stop you from pursuing the next first. Fear and inertia. Fear of failure or mockery and the comfort and ease of doing nothing at all. But the reality is that those impediments are two things that we have complete control over, not somebody else. My daughter's first. This belief system is something, thanks to life and whim, that I'm determined to pass along to my children. Firsts matter, and you control when and how they happen. Just this week, my daughter, who's attending a singing camp, decided she wanted to back out of auditioning for a solo she had planned and practiced at great length. No, I wasn't gonna force her to follow through, but I did have a conversation with her about what happens if she decides not to go through it. She'll never experience her second audition if she doesn't go through with her first. Eventually, and logically, that leads to a life without musical theater in it. In the end, though, I left the decision up to her. The next day, she overcame what really boiled down to stage fright and went through with the audition. And she got a call back. I don't have to tell you how happy that made her or how proud it made her father. And how comes the life lesson to follow? She would literally never know that joy had she not overcome fear and inertia. I don't care all that much about whether she lands the solo, but I care deeply about the lesson she just learned and how it will apply to her own legacy going forward. Your first is waiting. I hope more people will invest in this idea and come to recognize how powerful, memorable, and impactful life's first moments can be. I'm living proof that it matters, a lot, and so too will you be. You control all the power here. You either succumb to fear and inertia, or you start creating moments that truly do last a lifetime. I'll close with a story close to home for those in Northern Michigan. My wife and I frequently visit Traverse City, and when we do, we make a point to take the scenic drive up Old Mission Peninsula and back. I can't tell you how many times we've done that. Really, I can't tell you. We've done it so many times that they're all blurred to me now. But on our most recent excursion, we happened to notice a road sign that read Old Mission Inn, two miles. We'd have to make a right turn off our usual path if we wanted to check out this landmark that we never knew even existed. But heck, we didn't know where we had to be, so we made the turn. I'll never forget the conversation I had with the innkeeper of what I now know to be Michigan's oldest hotel, even older than the Grand Hotel. I'll never forget how quaint the architecture was, nor the charm and antiquity of the old-fashioned horse buggy adorning the front lawn. I'll never forget the gorgeous view of the bay you see while standing on the hotel's front porch. And while all of my other jaunts up the peninsula seem to run together in an amorphous blob of nostalgia, I'll never forget the first time we took a right turn off our planned path to try something new for a change. You just listened to the post titled, Two Things Stopping You From Your Next First and Why You'll Never Forgive Yourself by Tom Nixon with lifeandwhim.com. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? Yep. It's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard. And I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah, I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine, a new kind of Chromebook. This episode is brought to you by Pete's. Few things start your day better than a good coffee. That's why Pete's hand roast their coffee from a specific selection of high-quality beans. And they don't just put those beans into anyone's hands. Pete's trains their roasters for 10,000 hours so they can master the roast that gives you the most. Pete's Coffee. Coffee for coffee people. Find Pete's online or at your local retailer. Thank you to Tom and Jay and Heather over at Life and Whim. They had a little opening paragraph introducing this post, so I'll share that now and then some comments of my own. They said, 
When you're experiencing something new, you feel on fire. You create new memories. Time slows down. You break free of the rut of routine. We've been writing a great deal about the power of first moments over the last six months, and we've been thrilled to hear feedback from our readers that they've been inspired to chase more first moments of their own. This in turn has led us to create a new feature in which members of the Life & Whim community share their own inspiring stories. Leading things off is Tom Nixon, an entrepreneur, musician, actor, author, friend, and lover of Northern Michigan. Check out Tom's take on what it has meant to spend a year chasing first. So again, thank you to Tom for sharing this one. It's so true about first moments. And what's funny is I distinctly remember the first time I read about first experiences from Life and Whim. You can let your brain wrap around that one. But it's true, I read a post way back in episode 1217. This was in the year 2019. And it really stuck with me because they talked about how you can slow down summer with new experiences. And the title of that post is Experience the Longest Summer of Your Life. There's also a great one titled Slow Down Your Life Through the Magic of First Moments. Both of those are worth checking out. That one was episode 1370. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one and maybe gave you inspiration to try something new. But that'll do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back for the Thursday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.